Today I want to show you how Git and software testing fit together. We'll need our five step getting started recipe. We will need our stage and commit steps where we use git add to put changes in our staging area, then git commit to explain what those changes accomplish. And our main goal is to practice unit testing with branching, where the main branch is for working code and any incremental progress gets committed on a branch before being merged into main. So without further ado, let's use this workflow and write three functions in the starter repo you see here. Our five step recipe always begins at a terminal. On Mac, this would be your built in terminal. For me, this is the Windows subsystem for Linux with Ubuntu. Step two is to change into an appropriate directory. I have a folder for university classes, which I'll use here. Step three, we use git clone with a URL to download the repository from GitHub to our local machine. I cloned a repo named Hazel Lab 3 so for step four, I will cd into it. And step five, code space dot opens the folder in VS Code. The file tree gives us a sense of project structure and we'll want to work in this submission.py file. This one's pretty standard with imports at the top, one, two, three functions, and a main guard with function calls. The readme has instructions, and I like being able to read notes on one side of my screen while writing code on the other. This is also a good time to skim the readme if we haven't already. So this first function asks us to return names of everything in a directory, which we can do by returning os.lister Say thank you to PyLance for reminding us how this function works. Now hopefully when we run this we get something close to the expected output, and this looks reasonable. Since the manual test looks okay, let's see if the unit test agrees. And yep, that passed. So great, let's do part two. But wait, are we forgetting something? I want you to think of a commit as a unit of work. We just got something working, so we should make a commit. I'm working in part one, so I'll switch onto a part one branch. I'll stage the changes. Then I'll make a commit mentioning the part one solution. Let's also check that we know where we are. Git log dash dash one line dash dash graph shows us the commit history, which I've drawn as an image here. It tells us that our main branch has two commits and our solution to part one is on a part one branch. And since we already tested, we'll merge back into main, first by switching to main, then running git merge part one to merge part one into the main branch. I'll visualize the history again, which now shows that every commit is in line with the main branch. Now we're ready for part two. This time I'll immediately switch on to a new part two branch since our goal is to solve part two. The readme tells us to write a function with no arguments that returns a list, so let's explore how our files are organized. The resources code directory contains three files, and if we visualize this as a file hierarchy, resources contains code contains one, two, three files. Since the signature tells us to return a list, I'll immediately initialize an empty list and return it, and when we run submission.py we see those brackets indicating an empty list but the output's a little bit noisy, so I'll try to comment this out and focus on just the problem that I'm currently solving. So let's start a for loop, iterating over everything in the resources code directory, and since I'm exploring, I'll just print each item. When we run submission.py now, the output looks kinda similar to what the ls command showed us earlier. Uh, now let's handle the conditional. Since we only want files, let's add this condition that checks whether each item in our loop is a file. Everything previously was, so the output should be the same as it was before. Hmm, that's not the same. So we must have introduced a bug. Earlier we saw files in the resources slash code directory, but here's the issue. Resources slash code slash code1.py is a file, but code1.py on its own is not a file. It doesn't exist. I'll rename this variable since it isn't really a file, then I want to express that relative to where we are now, each of these are on a path called resources code. I'll replace the string with the variable we created and finally do some print debugging to see if this looks closer to what we expected in the first place. That looks better. So each loop iteration has access to the path and the name of something it contains. Let's assign these to local variables with os.path.join, then print and run again to confirm that our slashes are in the right places. And they are. So we expect tuples of strings and integers, so we can wrap this up by appending the file name and the size to the output list, which does appear to match the expected usage, so we can run the tests. 
The tests look good and we've done work, so we're almost ready to commit. But before we stage and commit, I want to tidy up or remove some of this debugging code since it isn't really relevant to the change. One way to show why is with git diff, which shows that we removed the past statement and replaced it with working implementation. So now we're probably ready. Git add, git commit, we'll do git status. Let's do our switch. Let's do our merge. Maybe check the status one more time and visualize what those changes look like. The git log shows that all changes are linear to main. We still haven't pushed, so origin main is two commits back. Part one has one commit and part two is up to date with main. All of this means that we're ready for part three. But I want to speed through part three since there's actually a solution that's almost identical to part two. But this is a great time to pause the video, read the instructions, and see if you can guess how I'll implement it. And here's a hint. We can start from the part two solution and change maybe three lines of code to get the answer. Anyway, pause now. Done? Okay. Switch on to part three and copy part two into part three. We now have a dir name parameter, so instead of always using the resources code directory, we can replace all usages of the path variable with the dir name function parameter. Let's manually test. Let's run the unit test when those look good. Let's tidy up our changes. Let's maybe confirm that the diff looks reasonable. Let's stage, commit, switch, merge, and visualize changes. Then run the code and tests one final time on the main branch to wrap this project up. Got it? If not, jump back. Otherwise, let's do one final review. On the git side, we said that a commit is a discrete unit of work. When code is correct, we are ready to merge into the main branch. Otherwise, any incremental work should be done on some other branch. On the testing side, we said that unit tests are one way to define code correctness. And when the tests pass, we are ready to merge. Leave a comment if you have any questions or suggestions. Otherwise, take care, y'all.